When I sat down to make a video about Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, I thought it'd make the most sense to only focus on the coaster types newly added to the series. Not only would it have made for a mind-numbingly long video to go over every single coaster type in the game, but it would have been a bit redundant, since the designs of the returning coaster types hadn't changed all that much from RCT2. That being said, a couple coaster types from the original Roller Coaster Tycoon games had new elements added to their RCT3 incarnations, elements inspired by completely different real-world coaster types. For example, the Steel Wild Mouse in RCT3 now has access to loop and barrel roll pieces, whereas the RCT1 Wild Mouse does not. So while the non-inverting mouse from RCT1 was probably inspired by the Wild Mouse coasters built by Aerodynamics or Mock Rides, the inverting RCT3 Wild Mouse draws direct inspiration from the Togo Looping Mouse, a model that first debuted in Japan in 1981. But the most interesting new element was added to the Hyper Coaster, and by interesting, I mean absolutely baffling. Join me as we take a deep dive into what inspired the Figure 8 Loop in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Anyone who's messed around in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 knows of the Hyper Coaster's Figure 8 Loop, a patently absurd looking inversion that consists of an elongated twisting ascent into a tight vertical loop, followed by a mirrored twisting descent. While the Hyper Coaster from the earlier games was clearly inspired by the Hyper Coasters built by Aerodynamics, no Arrow built ride contains this element. In fact, no Arrow built Hyper Coasters have inversions at all. And thank god for that. Can you imagine how painful this would be to experience on an arrow built ride? That being said, this inversion would likely be uncomfortable to experience no matter the manufacturer, and it probably isn't surprising to hear that the figure 8 loop is not found on any real world coaster type. The speed required to clear the vertical loop at the top of the inversion would make for excessive positive g-forces through the bottom half of the inversion, not to mention the lateral g's you'd experience navigating these twisted drops. So did the RCT3 developers just make this up? Well, precedent indicates that they did not, as no matter how ridiculous some of the new coaster types are, they didn't invent a single one of them. Like the other Ultra Strange coasters in RCT3, the figure 8 loop was based off of a never-built concept coaster, and it might just be the most bizarre one of them all. The design was dreamt up by a German showman named George Putz. 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 How should I pronounce the guy's name? In 1987, Mr. Putsch patented his crazy coaster design, which actually details two different figure 8 inversions. A laydown 8, which is essentially back-to-back -back Immelmans positioned to look like a sideways number 8, and the standing 8, featured in RCT3. Rumor has it, Mr. Putsch approached legendary coaster designer Werner Stengel to evaluate his design, who determined that it could not be built due to the excessively high forces riders would experience. But this didn't stop Mr. Putsch from building a model of the ride, a model which found its way to amusement trade shows. A few things stand out when looking at the model. The first and most glaring is how absolutely balls to the wall demented this thing looks. That first drop into the standing eight looks beyond horrifying. The second thing you may notice is the ride's striking resemblance to the traveling coasters built by Anton Schwarzkopf. While Schwarzkopf had nothing to do with the design of the ride, Mr. Putsch approached the ride manufacturer Ziera with the concept, who had recently partnered with Schwarzkopf on a few projects around that time, hence the resemblance to Schwarzkopf track. Not only that, but Schwarzkopf's traveling coasters were very popular around this time, and clearly were a main point of inspiration for the showman Putsch. In the end, the figure 8 never came to be. Potential buyers were not only concerned about the dangerous g-forces, but also the cost of the model, as the patent holding Mr. Putsch was allegedly asking for a licensing fee. George Putz and the craziest inversion ever conceived faded from the collective consciousness. Until 2004, that is. While I have to give props to Frontier for including this overwhelmingly obscure inversion in RCT3, it begs to be asked, why put it on the Hyper Coaster, where it looks extremely out of place? Why not put it on the Schwarzkopf-inspired looping coaster? I originally thought that it had to do with the support limits of the looping coaster, as the figure inversion is pretty tall, necessitating a drop of around 200 feet or so to build up enough speed to clear the loop. However, the looping coaster in RCT3 can easily reach well into the 200 foot range, so that can't be it. In the end, the figure 8 loop in RCT3 isn't an exact copy of the one patented by Mr. Putsch. 
Not only does the track twist in the wrong direction on the way up and down, but the tracks cross over each other when viewed from above, something clearly absent in Push's design. So maybe the figure eight in RCT3 is simply a skewed interpretation of Putz's figure eight loop, with Frontier leaning into the ridiculousness of the inversion, throwing realism out the window, and including it on the hypercoaster. I don't know, it's hard for me to defend the developers on this one. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Putch's figure eight coaster. And if you like this video, why not give it a like? It really helps support the channel. And if you love roller coasters and video games, consider subscribing and joining the Jay Natty community. Until next time, thanks for watching.